We're going to start off with a blues talk with Hank Imhoff, who will also be serving as a jam host tonight. So we're really pleased to have him with us. So we'll get Hank on here. And Hey, Catherine. Hey, Blue Society. Hello there. I guess I can start the blues talk. Um, first off, you've got a great show tonight. Oh my gosh, the sound check was fantastic. Uh, please stick around. It, it's it's uh, it's really good. So I tried to think of something because I'm talking to people that are very knowledgeable of the blues, and. Um, so we've all had a little time and I've gone through the library and listened to some old CDs. And I uh, listened to WXPN about a month ago to the, the Blues Jam on Saturday evenings. And I heard uh, JB Lenore, who I always wanted to check up on. So I, I bought a CD uh, Vietnam Blues and uh, opened a cover and I love to read liner notes. And I noticed here, um, Willie Dixon was very prominent. Uh, JB wrote all the songs, but Willie produced this. It was at uh, Out of Chess, and um, which was a great um, uh, studio um, out of uh, Chicago way. So I thought, huh, Willie Dixon. And then I went and here I had a book about Willie Dixon I didn't even know I had. I don't know if this is backwards in the screen. So I started looking up Willie Dixon and I remembered, and I don't know if y'all did this or not, um, in, uh, in the, the mid 60s, uh, I was a junior, senior in high school and uh, cream hit. And um, so I was listening uh, all the time to Spoonfill uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, which was a whole lot of love. Can't quit you. You shook me. Um, Jimi Hendrix had Hoochie Coochie Man. Um, the Stones, uh, Mick Taylor and Keith Richards were doing Little Red Rooster. Uh, the Doors, Jim Morrison and the Doors were doing Backdoor Man. Humble Pie, if you remember that group, was doing I'm Ready. Fog hat. I just want to make love to you. And um, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, Willie Dixon wrote all of these. So I started digging in a little deeper. And um, Willie was born in 1915 in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, had some time in the choir um, when he was a kid. I did some jail time, and uh, when he was a teenager, I, I couldn't dig up and find out what that was for. But it sounds like um, uh, a lot of his autobi or his biographers felt that he picked up and got a feel for the blues then. Uh, he got out of Mississippi and headed north, as was um, the fashion for a lot of Black folk at that time, ended up... Um, in Illinois, up in Chicago. And um, in 19, I'm gonna say, right after the war, he, uh, he actually was a boxer. He, uh, he won the Illinois State Championship as a heavyweight at the amateur, di amateur division. And uh, in the, um, uh, where he was boxing and working out, there was a gentleman he ran into that um, they got a band together and started doing uh, sort of doo-wop and that sort of thing. Um, Willie was a conscientious objector in World War II, spent 10 months in jail because of that, um, but got together with this gentleman and in 1950 got picked up as one of the studio musicians in chess. Uh, Chess was just a great um, um, studio at that time uh, with Helen Wolf, Muddy Waters, Chuck Berry, Otis Rush, Bo Diddley, 
Joe Lewis Walker, Little Walter, Sonny Boy, Williamson, Coco Taylor, um, Sam Lay, Jimmy Rogers, William Maybo, Memphis Slim, Lowell Folson, Johnny Shines, uh, just to name a few. Um, I couldn't find a complete list, even on Wikipedia, of everything that uh, uh, Willie Dixon had his fingers on. But he never had uh, so much uh, a big name. He was just always in the background. And he is credited with Muddy Waters and uh, the Muddy Waters Band uh, at Chess for creating uh, that real great Chicago sound that uh, you hear with um, um, with Little Walter. And uh, oh man, I'm missing a few names here, some big names. But um, anyway, if you get a chance, uh, check out uh, Willie Dixon and all them liner notes. Um, um, buddy guy, um, and you'll you'll just find that maybe he didn't write a couple songs on the CD, but he played bass on it, or did vocals, or did some background. Um, so one of those big names, over 500 songs written, which is quite a catalog. I I can't go through all the records that he was on. Uh, we wouldn't have enough time in 15 minutes to do that. But uh, just a reminder here in these days, uh, you need something to, to kind of kick around with on the computer. Check out Willie Dixon and, um, and listen to that, that sound, that, uh, that upright bass, uh, the sound of the drums, uh, the harmonica. Uh, there was just kind of a, a different sound if you're a, student of the blues, or if you like the blues, you do know about the, the, the Delta, the Mississippi sound. You go a little further west across to Brownsville, into Texas, um, you get a little bit of a different twist. Um, up to the North Carolina, through Alabama, Georgia's Piedmont, um, and there's just blends of all those um, and on into the uh, late 40s and 50s where the Chicago sound was developed and just so many, so many good players. Um, but uh, trying to think if there's anything else I can say if I want to end it there, but uh, check out Willie Dixon. Um, again, I, uh, I keep being amazed by going back through the history books and reading and um, and uh, digging up uh, just the history of the blues. Um, Willie and Robert Johnson, um, if you check those, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, Jimi Hendrix, Mick uh, Doors, uh, the Stones, uh, the, he was so prevalent and such a, uh, a force in that. And he also took the blues at almost the same time that Hal and Wolf went for the London sessions, um, uh, Willie Dixon was over in Europe uh, promoting the blues. It was, it was so popular and it was a, a way to, to pay the bills and, and he brought it back to the States and it had actually never left the States. That's the point. And uh, so it's great to promote this and and read about it and understand it. Um, so that's the blues talk for December 3rd, 2020. And um, I guess we'll go back uh, to Catherine for a second, or should I go on to uh, introduce our first guest? Uh, you can go ahead and introduce them. All right. Okay. I am so proud to do Thank this. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. About Willie Dixon. Yeah, we don't hear about him much. And I'm just beginning to learn a little bit about him and reading our books for the book club. And, and I'm like, who is this person? And, and he's really contributed so much. Yeah, he, he really has. And that was, I saw his name for decades and thought, oh, Willie Dixon. 
And, um, you know, it just never clicked. And I was like, that gone, this guy really had his hand and foot in it and, uh, and, uh, fought for a lot of musicians rights. And, uh, there were several large lawsuits. Uh, I think the last one might've been settled out of court with, uh, Led Zeppelin right about the time that, uh, Willie Dixon died. Anyway, um, let's go on here. Uh, I, uh, I've been tuning in more and more to the, the blues jam the uh, the, um, everybody just has something to contribute and it's great to listen to all the contribute, all the contributions from all these players. Uh, first gentleman, Neil Tapp, um, not familiar with Neil, um, and I watched the mic check, and I was like, why am I not familiar with Neil? <laughs> um, he, um, without dating either one of us, we look like we might have been out of the same era, and listening to uh, or reading all his background of um, anybody from Leo Kotke to, uh, um, to Willie Dixon or... Um, Arma Kalkinen, um, all the great finger styles people, uh, the Piedmont Blues. Um, um, I'm missing names, um, but um, two two names really stuck out. Ry Cooter and uh, David Bromberg were two great big light bulb happenings for me, and in, uh, in the late '60s, uh, early '40s, or late uh, early '70s, got to listen to a lot of those guys and still do. I think uh, my largest CD buy is, is Ry Cooter looking over there in the shelf. Uh, oh. Hey, Hank, can you unmute your mic? We got it. There you go. Thank you. I don't know how much you missed, but, <laughs> but uh, in this modern day age of computer, any one of these uh, gentlemen that are playing tonight, Neil Tapp, you can go on Google. If you, you can find a website to buy a CD, take a lesson, support these guys all you can they make their living with music they're deeply ingrained in it and this is a good time to help out that way any, any way you can 